I have re-3D printed the pieces. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut little pieces of styrofoam and glue those onto there to make the chutes. Um, hopefully some to act as air vents, some to act as the actual pouring vents. I'm hoping this will work a lot better. Also, these pinions I'm gonna cast this way, facing up like this and out. So hopefully that will work. And pouring this, the uh, larger casing the same way as I did last time, the thing different with that piece is I'm gonna heat up the aluminum even hotter. So I guess I'm on to building the molds around these pieces so I can cast them. Let's get started. So now it's just a waiting game for these to dry. The things are dry now, so I'm gonna go ahead and load them up in the furnace. Let's get them burning out. So I took the top off the furnace and it's doing way better now, way hotter. And I think it's because I can put more wood on top of it. I think I will still put the top on it for melting metal. When I took the parts out of the furnace, it just crumbled on me. Oh. I mean, they just, they okay. turned to powder. I mean, it was amazing. I'm just sitting there going, oh crap, now what? In order to rebuild the molds, I'd have to do that same mixture again. And I know that it doesn't work for these bigger molds very well. I mean, it, it is possible. I've done a few of them that way with the, the sand, ash, and cement mixture. Um, but it's just not working too well for these bigger molds. The smaller ones it works great with. So, I got a bag of plaster Paris. <laughs> I know, I wasn't gonna spend any money on this project. I was trying to do all from home materials. For the sake of just time and work, I think it's well worth it. So I should have done this from the beginning, but I wanted to see if I could do it another way. It's probably gonna get better detail in, in the whole part. So I'm gonna reprint the parts, reburn them out, Redo the whole process over again. One step at a time, right? Ah. Alrighty, so now that's it. I have seen people add sand to this. However, I looked it up and they said just plaster of Paris pretty much is the plain mixture for being heat resistant. Um, I don't think it'll crack, I think it'll be okay. Um, but just in case it does crack, no it won't crack, nah, it can't crack. It'll be good, although it's pretty powdery. My experience with powdery things is they crack. But we'll see. So I thought the burnout was done, so I stopped the fire, and uh, well, let me show you the result. Not looking good. And as I suspected, the bigger mold just shattered. I figured it kinda would. I think I put it in too wet though. I don't think this was completely dry when I put it in here, and so it just shriveled up and that's where all the cracks came from. Um, I have these which have been drying for a little bit longer than the bigger mold, so I'm assuming these gotta be dry. I'm just gonna basically put them over the top of the furnace, kinda slowly heat them, and then drop them in. Kinda hopefully get them preheated before they get boom, right to heat. They're cracking. I can hear them cracking when they're in there. Um, so either I'm heating them up too fast, which could be possible, or I shouldn't just use pure plaster of Paris. I'm starting to think that I should mix it with some sand and try that. Well, I've been experimenting with the plaster of Paris. One sand and two plaster of Paris, and that worked really well. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, so I just gotta redo the bigger mold. I've got one of the molds burnt out right now that worked out absolutely beautiful. Um, not a single crack, and the part is no longer in there. Just an incredible result. There are some air bubbles, um, but that is perfectly fine. I can grind those away. I am very 
pleased. I did not put the fan on when I burnt them out. I usually put the fan on to get the furnace extra hot, but I didn't do that this time. That worked out really well. Also, I got some comments saying you should preheat the mold, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna preheat it in an oven, and hopefully that'll be enough. Now that the molds are, or the three smaller ones are done, I'm gonna put all three in a small toaster oven, um, then cook the toaster oven up to the highest temperature I can possibly get it, bake those while I'm melting the metal, pull those out, pour them, All right, the pours are done on all of the pinions. Let's break them open. All right, here we go. This one first. Oh yeah. Wow. Gosh, that's beautiful. What these look like. Oh, this one shrunk. Look at that. What happened there? I wonder if they're shrinking. Oh man, again, it happened again. This did not work. Okay, so I think what I need is a little bit more aluminum over the top of them. So I have poured probably over 30 of these parts. They've all come out like this. Now that's great and all, but it's the wrong part. You see, I need them to like this. This isn't a perfect replica, it's still got issues, but it is still done pretty darn well. This is about the best pour I've gotten so far out of the 30, and it's still not even good enough for me to use in my aluminum chuck. So I need to find out another method. One is I either need to add air vents to this, which I think I'm going to add, and I need to do something to get the air out. I gotta make sure this part is stuck in there as best as possible. So I think for its best fighting chance, I'm gonna put it inside of a pressure chamber. I, I have the stuff for one. I looked around and I've got a, a chamber that I think will work. It's got like a half and half chamber. It used to be a pool filter. Um, so I'm just thinking, it wouldn't take me a matter of seconds to rig it up. It's made of fiberglass, so if something is to go terribly wrong, it's not like it's a plastic bin that's gonna explode on me, it's fiberglass. It's fairly strong and it's really thick. It probably would work for a vacuum chamber. Anyway, I'm not gonna put a vacuum in it though, I'm gonna use it as a pressure chamber. It's, it's more built to be a pressure chamber than a vacuum chamber. I'm gonna do it, it'll take me a matter of seconds to rig it up. So now all I gotta do, I'm gonna put a tray in there so that my mold can set on top of that. Pour the aluminum into that, shut the lid, tighten it down, pressurize it with air, boom, it's in there, boom, bada bang. Garrier than crap, but that's how I'm gonna do it. Pressure chamber built. Meanwhile, why I'm printing more pinions, I figured I will burn out the last of the molds. This big guy here. So I'll get to burning out that one. The mold is in there, ready to be poured for the aluminum. All I gotta do now is melt the aluminum, pour it into there, put the pressure chamber on, put 20 PSI of pressure in there. I don't wanna go any more than that. This is absurd. I can't even believe I'm doing this. Ah, well, wish me luck. Now to lose melting. Oh, it's so cool. So toasty. I'm psyched. Project pressure chamber. On the way.
just because I don't want anything overheating, so. Wow, look at this. See all this aluminum? It's been pressed in there. It's pushed in. <laughs> I think that might have worked. That's exciting. Wow, that was a lot of fun. I wonder if it worked. All the holes have aluminum in the top of them, but I've learned from my experiences that if you feel confident in one of these molds, probably not that good. It's the ones you don't think are gonna work that work. Anyway, we'll see. So, let's get this thing open. Put it upside up, upside down. Oh my, oh, whoa, man. Way better than the last one, yeah? Yep, so you just didn't have enough aluminum. You didn't have a high enough uh, risers on it. Yeah. You needed higher risers and it would have worked. Look at this on the oh side. Gosh. Look at that. That layers of the plastic. The bottom is, is perfect where it had enough. A little bit here, but that was because of a rock that fell through. Well, it looks a lot better than the last one. So, obviously we're getting somewhere, yeah? Looks like I just need to have riser on it that has a lot more aluminum in it pouring into it, it looks like, yeah? Mm -hmm. So maybe what I'll do is I'll mark these holes and I'll put right air outlets there. right there because I'm having that on every single one of my parts. These are a lot smaller than the last ones, though. The last ones are like that. Yeah. So. And really, look at this quality. Everywhere where it feels right, you were fine. It was when you ran out of material. Look at this. It sucked it down and ran yeah. out of material there. I think the aluminum slightly shrinks too, so it draws more aluminum as it cools. Yeah, dude, I'd put a higher riser on it, and I think it's going to work perfect. The pour was not so successful, but we're getting there. Every time we pour something aluminum, we get a step closer in that direction. Currently, right now, I got the pinions here with the air vents in them, like that. So now all I really gotta do is just burn them out. I'm gonna go do that right now. Start. Start on fire. I have just burnt out the aluminum pinions, so now I just gotta put some sort of casing on top of here to extend this up so that more aluminum can sit on top of the part as it cools to make sure that there's enough aluminum in here. They smell like hard boiled eggs. Those smell like hard boiled eggs. That is so weird. Okay, just gotta get the little vent things on top of them, so we'll do that. All right, so, so the three of them are down in there. One, two, three. I made the air vents up here so I can pour the aluminum down the center here. It will go into all three of those down there, hopefully filling up all three of those. Plus any excess aluminum will go on top of all three, pressing down into the molds. Then I'll put it inside the pressure chamber. Pretty much it should be complete after that. Right now I'm baking it to make sure I get it warm. And it is fairly warm. It's gonna definitely crack. I can already see cracks starting, but that's fine. It's just gotta hold itself together, and I think it will. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bake it. I'm getting the furnace started up, firing up over there. We'll get ready to cast. Break it open. Oh, I sure hope this worked. Only one way to find out. Ooh, yeah, baby. Well, that sure looked like that worked. Wow, and the quality. Oh my, that's the best quality piece I've ever seen. Look at these guys. They're gorgeous. They're also covered by a bunch of aluminum. Okay, I'm gonna go get a saw, and I'm going to saw right down here, which should be able to loosen up each one of these pieces, so we can get a closer look at each one of these. Uh, so I'm gonna go do that. These are the pinions. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, they have their issues here and there, but all of the gear teeth are there, and that's what I was most concerned about. This one, that the back of it didn't turn out so well, the inner section of the mold actually broke off and fell in, so you actually can see, see it in there. Uh, so I may uh, 
I may recast one of these pieces, um, but I really like the quality of these two pieces. They're really all phenomenal. So now these pinions can be added to my pile of pieces, definitely closer. You can even see how these pieces work very well on this gear here, look at that. Just, oh my gosh, they fit together so well. Oh, it's gonna be so cool. So I got the pinions done this episode, uh, but we're still missing the casing, the thing that holds all this together. So we'll have to get that printed and recast. <gasps> so close. Ah, oh, this episode was one heck of a learning curve. So having this extra chunk of metal that was on top there, I think worked a lot better. I'm happy. I am very happy at this result. I did a lot in this episode and it was mostly for learning. Thank you so much for suggesting preheating the molds. I guess this is the, wraps up this episode. I guess I'll see you in part five where we hopefully finish the casing, grind it up, and put it on the lathe. That's the hope at least. And finally test it. We're so close to the ending. It's like so psyched. So anyway, I'll see you the next time I get this accomplished. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye.